Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's videos, we're going to be making a histogram, a frequency histogram using six classes for this data. And on this side, we have the intervals in minutes between earthquake eruptions. All right. So here we have a list of 20 values. Now, the first thing we want to do when creating a histogram for this data is take our values and find the range of the data so we can create a class width because we know we have six classes to make with this data. And so the class width of this data, which will be used to create the classes of the histogram, will tell us the separation between values that we're going to use for every class. Now the class width is calculated by taking the range and dividing it by the number of desired classes. And in this case, we want six classes. So we're going to take our range, which is the high minus the low. And if we look at our data, we'll see that our low is 47 and our high is 103. So we're going to subtract these two from each other to get the range. We're going to divide it by the number of classes we want. Now we know we need six classes for this data. So we're going to put the six on the denominator here. So now our class width, which I'm going to just abbreviate with CW, is 103 minus 47. That's going to give us 56. And we're dividing that by the value of 6. Now 56 divided by 6, we'll use a calculator to do this. And when we divide this, we'll get exactly 9.33 with a continually repeating decimal, which we'll have to round up. Now be very careful when you take this step, because no matter if this number gives you a regular 9, just a whole number 9, we're still going to round it up to the next value, which always has to be done. So in this case, 9.33, we'll round it up to 10 anyway. So now we know we need 10, the value of the class width is going to be 10, meaning that there are going to be 10 values of data from the lowest value going all the way to the highest value to make our classes. So let's see our class limits here. Starting from the lowest value, we're going to begin our class limits. So our lowest value, again, is 47. And we want to account for the first 10 data values, right? So that's 47, uh, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, to 56. Make sure you're counting this, because sometimes, often, people make the mistake of putting 57. But 10 values, including 47, goes up to 56. Now, for every value going down from this first class, we just have to add 10 to each side. So 10 plus 47 gives us 57. And 56 plus 10 gives us 66. So whenever we find the class width, we take a lower limit or upper limit and add the class width to each side. All right, so after 57 to 66, we're going to get 67 to 76. After these two, we're going to get 77 to 86. Almost done here, we have then 87 to 96. And lastly, we get 97 to 106. Now there we have our six classes, which work perfectly fine for when we're doing the class width. Now if you don't use this exact value, you will not get the same results, all right? We see here that the highest value just falls in the last class. Once we create our class limits now, the next thing we're going to do is create our boundaries and after we make our boundaries, we're going to get our frequency for each boundary. Now there's a real easy method for getting both of these. And to get our boundaries, what we're going to do is, we're going to add half of the value and subtract half of the value to the upper and lower. So because these are our whole numbers here, we're going to add 0.5 and we're going to take away 0.5 from either side of the limits. So we'll be subtracting 0.5 to every class limit on this list on the left hand side and we'll be adding 0.5 to every class limits right hand side. All right so on this side we're going to subtract 0.5 from 47 and we get 46.5 and this is going to go all the way up to 56.5. Now something very unique when you're making boundaries is that the final boundary of the previous class is what the next boundary begins with. Because we subtract 0 0.5 to 57 and we get the same value of 56.5. And again we add 0 0.5 to 66.5. So a real quick way to do this for the right hand side, we just add the 0 0.5 to every term. And 
And to make this speed up for you guys, you could take the previous class's final boundary and just insert it to the next line, right? So I'll take 66.5 and insert it here. Take 76.5 and insert it right here. 86.5 on the next line. And finally, 96.5 on the next line. Now that we have our boundaries, we just have to get to our frequency. Now you have to be very careful when you're doing this. So for the sake of doing this correctly and accurately, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my class limits and check all the quantities of the values. And while I'm inserting the values here, I'm going to go striking them out to show that I've already counted them. So I'm going from 47 to 56, and I'm looking for the numbers. So I'm going downward when I'm doing this, because often when we go left to right, we can make a mistake. It's just a sleight of eye. So it's better to go downward, scratching out the numbers, going from left to right, column by column, right? So 47 to 56, we have one value here. 47 to 56, here we have our second value. 47 to 56, so we have two for that one. Now let's go from 57 to 66. 57 to 66, we have one. And we have just one for that one. How about 67 to 76? 67 to 76, here's one. Here we have two. 67 to 76, three, four. So we have four for that one. Now let's move on to 77 to 86, right? So 77 to 86, we have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, and we have five. So we have five for that class. Let's move on to 87 to 96. And as you see, the numbers are reducing to smaller and smaller amounts. Once we finish this next class, we can safely assume the last remaining values will go directly to the final frequency of 97 to 106. So here we go, 87 to 96. We have one, we have two, we have three here, we have four, five, and six, all belong to 87 to 96. Now the final remaining values are for the final class which goes from 97 to 106. And we can see here, it's just 103 and 98. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have been following my own procedure. So here we go down the list. We see 98. That's one. And the last one we have here is 103. That makes two. Now to be certainly sure and safe that we have all our values, as you saw, I just made a little error and mistake. We want to check the sum of the frequency to see that we have the same amount of data values we have here. We see here there are four rows, five columns, and four by five gives us 20. So we should see that our number for the frequency is the same exact value of 20 numbers. Two plus one is three, plus four is seven, plus five is 12, plus six, 18, and plus two is exactly 20. So we know we have everything accurate here. Now what we want to do is we want to make this histogram. Now remember, making a histogram we must use the frequency and the class boundaries as the endpoints for our graph and chart because these values are going to go exactly adjacent to one another, right? So here on our frequency histogram, we're going to have the boundaries of the eruption times and intervals of the er intervals of minutes between eruptions down here. So we'll put eruption times. And this is in minutes, we'll just detail it here. And up here on this side, we're gonna have the actual frequency for each value. All right, now this is gonna begin from the lowest value to the highest possible value in our chart. We'll go up to seven for the sake of having enough space for everything. And we'll just add the six lines between. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And on the bottom here, we're gonna have the boundaries for each class. Now we're gonna begin with the lowest boundary because it's the lowest value here. So we're gonna have 46.5 at the beginning. 
And for every boundary, what we're going to do is we're just going to add the next line since they share a boundary from class to class. It will work perfect as we're going across this whole list of data. So we have 46.5. The next class goes to 56.5. The next one, 66.5. Then we have 76.5. 86.5. Ninety-six point five, and finally we have one hundred and six point five. So now what we have to do is we have to create the bar graph for the histogram, which takes the frequency values as the height and the width is each class boundary, right? So the first class boundary from forty-six point five to fifty-six point five has a frequency of two. So we just box in that two there. The next class, fifty-six point five to sixty-six point five, has a frequency of one. The following class has a frequency of 4, so we're going to raise this all the way up to the 4, go over and down. The following class has a frequency of 5, this is going to just go a little higher, let me fix this line. So the next class goes up to 5, the following class goes up to 6. And the final class here goes up to 2. And that's our frequency histogram. All right? Thank you.